Hello everyone, welcome back to Wasabi Aquarium channel and thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to talk about the adequate amount of CO2 to add in a planted aquarium. There have been many questions in this regard from the customers we get at the store and the subscribers of this channel. So I'm going to explain this topic in details in this video. This would be very helpful for you. For example, if you just started a planted aquarium and don't know the right amount of CO2 to add in the aquarium. If you are growing red aquatic plants, if you want to keep your plants clean, if there is something wrong with your plants and you don't know why, or if your plants don't grow fast enough. This video will be very helpful for those who are struggling with these problems. We manage 11 aquariums at this store at the moment and the amount of CO2 differs for each one. We have accumulated a lot of data on the growth depending on the amount of CO2. So this video contains relatively reliable information so you can refer to this video when you have to deal with problems. So I am going to explain the amount of CO2 based on the 60cm aquarium Later in the supplementary explanation, I would like to talk about other sizes such as 30 centimeters, 90 centimeters, 120 centimeters. So I would like to start with 60 centimeters. If you have a 60 centimeter tank, I think you have a standard water tank which is 60 centimeter width, 30 centimeter depth, and 36 centimeter height. For those who own such a water tank, how much CO2 do you add? Perhaps 60 to 70 percent say one drop per second. I think you found many explanations that mention one drop per second is okay if you have done some research online or through books. That is not wrong, so you can consider it as one way. However, every aquarium is different depending on the owner. I think the contents are different, the water quality is different, and the daily management method is also different. For those who want to improve the condition of plants to make an aquarium with thick background glass and thick foreground glass in the front, like this, one drop per second for 60 cm aquarium is very small. You may be surprised right now, but there is basically no problem if you add more CO2 than you think. However, there are three points to be considered that I will explain later, but if you abide by three points, there will be no issues at all. As proof, even in a shop, we added two drops of CO2 per second, or even three drops per second but it didn't affect at all. So there is no problem even if you add more than one drop per second. This is one point. However, I think there are some people who are mainly growing firm plants. For those people, one drop per second is good. For example, if you place sand underneath and stick only with Bobitis, Anubis, or microthorium. Of course there is no problem, even if you put 2 drops per second in such a tank, but since it also saves the amount of CO2 added, I think 1 drop per second will be good for such users. On the other hand, if you want to grow a lot of really beautiful vibrant plants, such as bright red colored aquatic plants like this. Or, if you want to make one side loan, instead of one drop per second, try adding two or three drops. The condition may improve immediately. Especially, you may have bumped into this problem. The condition is not terrible, there is no shortage of materials, the lighting is very strong, and the floor is made of nutritious soil. 
and the water quality is weakly acidic. The quality of water is kept at 6.5 or less in pH. The cold is also relatively low, and it is weak acidic soft water. But if you have problems with plant's condition, try raising the amount of CO2 a little, and the situation can improve at once. So I would like you to check and adjust it there. I have talked about two drops or three drops per second, but there are three points to be considered, as I mentioned before. And if you apply to those three points, it is safer to have CO2 reduced. So keep this in mind. The first of the three points is when the fish has lifted its nose. This is very easy to tell, but when the fish is breathing on the surface of the water, it means there's too much CO2 in the tank. So replace the water and inhale strongly for aeration. Drive out CO2 accumulated in the aquarium and add oxygen. If this is discovered early, it will be saved. So if you have such symptoms, you should check. Similarly, in the case of shrimps, they stop moving when the amount of CO2 becomes too large. However, in the case of shrimps, there are two reasons for it. So there are cases where they stopped due to excessive CO2, and sometimes due to NO2 or deterioration of water quality. So it is necessary to identify the reason. But if the condition is shrimp is bad, there is a possibility that the amount of CO2 is excessive. So at that time, you will have to expel CO2 and supplement oxygen. And second, this happens in the summer, is when the water temperature is rising. For example, it approaches 28, 29 degrees, or even 30 degrees. And if it exceeds 30 degrees, it will be a severe environment for tropical fish. But when it approaches 30 degrees, It becomes an environment that causes oxygen deficiency. When this happens, reduce the amount of CO2 and lower the water temperature. If you have to keep at 28 or 29 degrees, or you don't have an aquarium cooler, it is safer to squeeze CO2 in the summer. Regardless of the water temperature, if you keep putting two or three drops per second, you may run out of oxygen. And the third point is when the oil film is on. The reason why fish can survive with two or three drops per second is that CO2 is escaping from the surface of the water. It is hard to grasp the image because it is invisible, but since gas is exchanged where it comes into contact with air, even though CO2 is easily dissolved in water, at the same time it escapes easily. It is not good if it becomes excessive, but even if there is a little too much CO2, it will come out of water surface. So it means that living things can survive, and they are less likely to suffocate, especially with external filters such as shower pipes and lily pipes. When the water surface is firmly undulating, the surface area in contact. With air is large and it has the effect of escaping CO2 to the outside, so the inside of the tank is not going to be deficient in oxygen. This is both an advantage and a disadvantage. But for living creatures, there is an environment where accidents are unlikely to occur. On the other hand, the problem when the oil film appears on the water surface. Its gas exchange becomes difficult, and CO2 is trapped. For example, if you put one drop CO2 per second, even if the oil film is on the surface of the water, it is unlikely that oxygen deficiency will occur. However, the place where the oil film appears 
when CO2 is put 2 drops or 3 drops per second, the air and the water tank will be shut off, making it difficult for gas to exchange. If this happens, there is a possibility that oxygen may become deficient, so I think it is better to reduce CO2 in an aquarium. Rather, it is better to remove the oil slick, so if you want to remove it, I have made a video on how to erase the oil slick in the past of this channel. If you're interested, I will put a link in the description below so you can find that video. As long as you pay attention to these three points, you can add CO2 as much as you want without causing oxygen deficiency. Also, you may be wondering how to measure CO2. I think that everyone has a counter. As I explained earlier with a few drops per second at the counter, it is easy to see the speed of bubbles to rise in the counter. So the point to be noted is that although various manufacturers are offering counters, the size of bubbles varies depending on the maker. So I think you should consider that. Originally, Ada first wrote the number of drops per second in Japan, so even now, basically the bubble size of Ada's glass counter is the standard. If you are using a bubble counter from a different manufacturer, I think it will be better to compare them. So I think you should make a fine adjustment. Finally, I will return to the question at the beginning. For those who start aquatic plants, the question is how much CO2 should be added? For a 60 cm aquarium, I think it's best to start from 1 drop per second. The reason for this is that in the case of soil, the initial pH will be extremely low. So if you add 2 or 3 drops per second, CO2 will drop further and it may not be a good environment for some aquatic plants. Soil tends to rise gradually, and I think it is better to gradually rise CO2 in such a state and finally keep it at about 2 drops per second. After that, even immediately after trimming or even when some of the water plants are reduced, it is better to keep it as it is so that development of the new shoots will be faster. So it is only 1 drop per second in the beginning, and then 2 or 3 drops for 1 second. I think that is just right. Of course if you meet the 3 points of the caution mentioned before, you should reduce CO2. Finally, I will also introduce amount to be added in other tank sizes as reference values. For example, if you are using a small 30cm or 45cm water tank, 1 drop per second. And if it is 90cm water tank, 3 drops per second, I think that there is no problem if you add 4 drops per second if it is a 120cm water tank. If you do it once, and it does not seem to work, I think it will be okay to increase it by 20 to 30 percent. So I would like you to add CO2 while watching the situation. I explained the amount of CO2 added in this video, but if you increase the amount of CO2 and the condition of aquatic plants really improves, that is good for you. However, if the situation does not improve, there may be another factor. As I mentioned in past videos, you have to take total measures against aquatic plants, so if you cannot improve the situation with CO2 amount, you need to look for another factor. For example, I think it will be possible to solve this problem by checking whether the liquid fertilizer is well balanced and checking the water quality. We will continue to make videos about that topic and there are some things I have touched so far and some that I have not yet. So I will fill in that area. If you continuously watch the Wasabi Aquatic Plant channel, I would be very happy. Also, if you have any questions regarding CO2 addition, 
and please write in the comment section below. I will check it. Please note that I cannot reply to each comment at the moment. When the same question is asked many times, I will answer it in another video. So please write it if there is anything you wonder. Right, this is it for today's video. It was about the adequate amount of CO2 in an aquarium. If you found this video useful, please make sure to leave a like on this video. And I do appreciate it if you could subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Until then, take care. See ya.